What's up agency owners, Jason Swank here with another episode of the Smart Agency Masterclass, a podcast that tells the stories of other agency owners that have been successful before you so you can emulate them and scale your agency faster and not feel like you're alone. And on today's episode, we're gonna to talk to an agency owner that's grown to a multi-million dollar agency by picking a niche and really diving in after it. And we're gonna go over some strategies for LinkedIn as well. So let's go ahead and jump into the show. Hey man, welcome to the show, Nick. Thanks for having me. Yeah, tell us who you are and what do you do? Um, well, my name's Nick, I'm the CEO of Cleverly. We're a LinkedIn marketing agency, been around for about five years now. Um, most of us are in Southern California, but we have 20 employees spread out around the US. Awesome, and what made you jump into the agency world? Are you an accidental agency owner or did you have plans of pain and and misery. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I always like the thought process was if I can learn how to market, I'll always have a job because I'll be making people money. And so I was a podcast addict until I just started to uh, decided to join and start my own agency with a, with a business partner. What made like what was your first offerings and what did you guys charge? Yeah, so my partner originally did how to get his own leads for a huge tech company he worked for. So he used LinkedIn to get himself leads and it worked so well. He started the agency, um, charging like 800 to a thousand dollars a month to send like back then you could send 2000 connection requests a month on LinkedIn. Um, since then LinkedIn's totally slammed down. Now you can only send 400. And so our original offering was just honestly a ton of volume on LinkedIn as an agency fully done for you. Um, copywriting, targeting, everything. So that was the first offer. Cool. What was your guys' biggest mistake in the agency that you guys learned from? Oh man. Um, honestly, I think most agencies get stuck at like 10 to 20 clients. And we were like that for about a year, just because um, we were doing so much for them. It was kind of stressful. So for us, the biggest thing that caused scale was dropping our price and switching our mindset to like, um, fully backend scalable ops with a lot of automation so we can service a ton of clients and pull ourselves out of the business. I think like if we had not switched our mindset to that and been okay with delegating work, we would just be like most agencies out there that never really scale. That's interesting. You know, mo most people, and, and I remember, you know, a story that comes to mind was one of our agency mastery members, David, and I used to kind of beat them up a little bit because at the time, you know, our agency, we always wanted to be the premium to charge the most, but not have so many clients. And so I always challenged everybody. And David came along, was like, look, man, I, I charge a couple hundred bucks for social media management. Uh, we're a factory. I hire really young, smart people. And, uh, you know, we were like, okay, cool. Like, he explained it to me. I was like, oh man, I understand this. Like automate, you know, really kind of delegate all this stuff. And literally a couple of years later, he sold his agency for a life-changing amount and he just travels the world, um, you know, because he had that vision of what, what they wanted. So I, I always find it interesting because most people want less clients to charge more, um, but yeah. you guys are different. So I like that. Yeah, that works too. Just for us, it was the other way around. Yeah. Yeah. What, um, what, let's talk about LinkedIn a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. let's talk about the shit that these people do wrong. Um, because like I was telling you on the pre-show when I, I can smell it coming, like people connect with me. I really liked your profile and I really like what you're doing. And then I know it's coming. It's like, then I get a, sorry, I'm going to cuss fucking paragraph of their life story and how they can help me. And I literally am like block, delete, report, like go away. So yeah. let's talk about the bad first. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about the ugly. So the ugly is most people get on LinkedIn and think they're just going to pitch and sell. Um, it's and like, that's why you get not just salesy, but also irrelevant pitches because people discover automation tools and then they just spray and pray of more of the same crap. 
And so it's honestly flooded the connection requested inbox with very generic, a, we should network, you know, saw your in blank industry, something very generic. Um, that's the ugly of the platform. Um, and honestly it happens all the time and it's turned a lot of people off from the platform. And so that was kind of like the genesis of even why we got in is because there's ways to make it work like cold calling, like cold emailing. Um, but no one's like, no one's doing it right. It's, it's kind of crazy. Let's talk about the right way since I kind of went on my little tangent. Cause like, I even hate to just even open up LinkedIn. Like I look at it, I'm yeah. like a yeah. hundred requests and I'm like, boom, like I just delete them all. So what are the right ways that people can do that are working? Yeah. So people always want like copy hacks and stuff like that, but it really starts with targeting. Um, you can't just like target any, anyone you really have to niche, not just niche down, but hit relevant people. So like, I always start clients off with, okay, who are your best clients? like that you get the most results for, let's target people just like them. So you actually have something like credible and relevant to say, because I think half the reason you think it's spam is because someone's like, hey, I'm an HR broker or I'm an insurance agent. And you're like, dude, I don't like need this. Like I'm not even in that world or whatever. And so um, there's a ton of ways on Sales Navigator, which is an incredible tool that literally can build like your entire addressable market in a list we build like really, really hyper niche lists, like no more than 1000 prospects per list of people who are like perfect ideal clients or like um, hyper local, like people in Santa Monica for me, um, college alumni, like things where you'll actually have something to say to them. So that's step one is targeting. And then step two is just, um, here's like the big mindset shift. It's like, you're not on here to sell. Like LinkedIn is a social selling platform your only goal is to like start conversations or build your network. Um, and so if you switch your mindset to just like starting conversations and on salesy, you'll find that your messages get really short. You start asking really good discovery questions and like eventually you get to like a value prop where you're not pitching, but you're like offering something of like free value. And yep. so that like is, is pretty big for us. Yeah. What we've done on LinkedIn is we'll reach out on a very targeted basis. Like if we like what they're doing at their agency, we'll say, Hey, I love what you're doing at the agency. Would you like to come on the podcast and talk about right. your expertise and right? Like it's very different than I really like what you're doing in the market. We should connect. Oh, and by the way, we have this agency mastery, which you should join. And it's this and this and this and this. And you're like, shut the heck up. Shut the heck um, up right you guys do it perfectly so you actually do um two tactics one of the tactic is uh boost their ego so i always hey love your agency or something specific about it like hey you guys are crushing it in this space like people love their ego stroked and then um if you don't have a podcast you just got to think of the next best offer where it's like a low friction not a sales pitch like uh for instance like we have um a lot of design clients or video clients and we're just like hey let me the call to action is let me send you like a free video breaking down your seo like is that cool and just like lower friction offers yeah i i have people doing that all the time and and i'll actually respond i'll be like sure you know feel free and then you have to deliver though like i can't tell you yeah. how many times I get people to send me like this video and I'm like, Ooh, this is bad. Like <laughs> it, it, then it comes down to a different conversation about like, you got your foot kind of in the door. Like you got me yeah. waving to you from, you know, the window. Um, but I'm still not opening the door. <laughs> like I'm still looking Dude. through the peephole. <laughs> That's like music. Cause people always talk about like offering free value and then they send some crappy blog post or something. So, yeah. um, the good news is if you find a good tripwire irresistible offer, like a really, really good one, it's so evergreen. Like your podcast is evergreen. You can like ask anyone that's credible on the podcast. And then like some might turn to clients, some might refer, some might just be good, whatever. So, yeah. um, it's gotta be super valuable. 
Well, other ways I've seen it work is, especially if you don't even have a, if you don't have a podcast, you should have a podcast. I know it's a drinking game with a lot of people. Um, whenever I recommend people having a podcast, but freaking drink then, I guess. Um, but you could say, Hey, I'm writing an article and I'm interviewing the five best experts in this industry and want to get your take on it. Would you be willing to contribute? And I'll interview you and whatever it is, right? Like, so there, Mm -hmm. there's ways to do it versus, um, ways not to do it. Uh, what other things have you seen? Well, let's kind of. Is there anything else of reaching out to people on LinkedIn? Because I want to know what to post on LinkedIn as well. I think people are very, they think LinkedIn is like every other platform. And I probably fall into this the same way as well. But is there anything else on making connections with people on LinkedIn that we haven't chatted about? Yeah. So um, I look at LinkedIn as inbound and outbound. So you can send messages to people. And then like you said, you can also post. And so like outreach, most people's posts get little to no engagement. And so there's two or three post types that we've found outperform all others. Um, one is first have this re- revelation, which is that most people on LinkedIn are employees, not just like your ideal decision maker CEO. And so the stuff that really goes viral, if you want virality, is HR and stories. And some can be a little corny. But um, people really resonate with like a, I started from the bottom, now I'm here kind of story, or I was fired and now I'm a top performer. Those stories hit really hard. Like, dude, I posted the other day about uh, how we have a uh, all remote team and like how, how we execute. Uh, that one post got 3 million views and I literally got 7,000 new followers from that one post. Um, was that a was video? Kind of- was a video no, it was written? Like straight text, straight text, like no image, no video. It was just like the hook was I run a hundred percent remote team and we don't have to micromanage. Here's how like that, like that's pretty much the post. So it was like a blog, a blog do. post. Yes. Like a shortened blog post. Um, yeah. And then you, we get into more tactics, but like HR related topics, you know, failure to success stories. And then, what I like to mix in too is the value add stuff. It's like the other day I had a post go almost pretty viral where I'm like, Hey, we have 1300 clients. We're the best LinkedIn marketing agency. Here's our whole strategy. And then like comment if you want the, the full guide and training. And that got like 200 comments. And so really value driven stuff. And then just like not complicated, short, all text stories uh, work pretty well. Gotcha. So you're not posting video or images on LinkedIn. It's more just text. Um, so video and images work as long as you're not just like reposting your blog posts, like you need to write for the platform. Um, you know, you, you see some guys that crush it with video. It has to be like your core competence. So if you're not good on video, you need to have the self-awareness and not, not try it in my opinion. But, um, for me, like you just need to practice people. (laughs) or or practice you probably know how to train them like i'm i'm okay on video but i found like images and text work really well for me Mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's well i mean when anybody ever starts out on video hell i i was watching one of my first videos and you're like oh my gosh oompa loompa (laughs) like what was i thinking um, yeah, you know, it's, it's all like grainy like you can barely see the video yeah no it was in my basement, an unfinished basement with a green screen behind me, like an ugly green screen, horrible lighting. So like, that's why I look like an Oompa Loompa. But the funny story was, because this was in my Georgia house before I finished the basement. So I had to sound depth the basement. So I had all these mattresses on each side. So it sounds like with, with uh, you know, like uh, serve the mattress, like you have plastic over it, right? And yeah. then in the other room, which was finished, I had trains. So one time my neighbor comes down in the basement to help me move something and he sees the train set. And then he sees like this camera, this green screen and these beds against the wall. He's like, what is going on here? <laughs> so that's not how to do oh, a video. 
That's hilarious. Um, yeah, that's most people's home setup, like first studio is just so bad. <laughs> but you're yeah. right, you kind of just have to get started, right? And then you get better over time. Yeah. But that's yeah. interesting, though, that text is working really well for you guys. I never thought about that, right? Like, I think we've been doing LinkedIn very wrong on the the posting side. Like we, mm -hmm. like, like everybody else, and I kind of made fun of myself before. It's like, oh, I treat LinkedIn just like Instagram or Facebook, if you even pay, post on Facebook anymore, right? Like, you know, there's, it's, you, you treat it, but you have to like, I almost look at it as pick the, the mediums that you want to dominate and just yeah do that. Don't try to pick every one of them. That That's a good point in general about agencies. We scaled our whole business in the beginning to like 1 million off of LinkedIn outreach and then Google ads like that. Those were the only two channels that we were good at. Um, only now when we're at like four, you know, we're at 4.7 million. Now we have eight channels. Now we're doing Twitter. Like we get leads off Twitter. Now we're doing a ton of SEO, but in the beginning, you just got to get great at like one or two things and kind of growth hack it. Um, and that's all, all it takes in the beginning. Yeah, no, it's great advice. Well, Nick, this has all been amazing. Is there anything I didn't ask you that you think would benefit the listeners listening in? Um, no, I think I always have one suggestion for people that haven't gotten results on LinkedIn and it's to go and um, use the search bar at the top and search like who an ideal prospect might be for you and just send like 15 connection requests, but personalize it based on their profile. You'll be shocked that you get like three to five, honestly, three to eight out of the 15 you send to accept your request. And so just that little like dopamine rush of, wow, like my ideal audience is really accessible on LinkedIn pretty much for free is a good like place to get, to get started. Don't pitch yeah. just like a really personalized request. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I never connect with anybody that doesn't even write anything. And then I read it before I, I connect. So that is a uh, good advice. What's the agency website people can go and check you guys out? It's cleverly.co. Awesome. Um, and I have a free guide on like our whole strategy that you could execute on yourself. Just click around on, on the site um, under blog and guides and you'll find it. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for coming on the show, Nick. And if you guys enjoyed this episode, make sure you share it out and subscribe. And if you guys want to be around amazing agency owners on a consistent basis where we can see the things you might not be able to see and do really amazing stuff in your agency, create more freedom, reduce stress, get the clients you really want and have your agency team make decisions without coming to you for everything. I want all of you to go check out agencymastery360.com. And until next time, have a swank day. Thanks, Jason. All right. Where's my outro? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah, no outro. It doesn't work, this ecam. <laughs> all right. Take care, guys. <laughs> Bye.